Questions and Answers for Sonnet 18, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day by William Shakespeare. So I'll read through the questions and then I'll go through the answers. Certain things are underlined, there are ticks included. Unfortunately, there were a couple of typos and amended um, bits of information, but I will explain everything that's going on. So number one, give three reasons for why this is a Shakespeare sonnet. Quote two reasons for why the poet's lady is better than a summer's day. What is the eye of heaven? Number four, identify and explain the figure of speech in lines five and six. Number five, explain what the poet means in lines seven and eight. Um, what will the poet's lady not lose according to lines nine and ten? Death is being personified and should be capitalized. Why do you think the poet did not do this? In other words, what is he trying to say? And the last two lines give the conclusion. Why does the poet say her beauty is eternal? So there are only two questions where it says quote. So please keep that in mind. Everything else needs to be paraphrased. If they ask you to quote, you have to quote. Generally, it will be a quote with an explanation. Um, if you are going to quote for something that doesn't require it, you are going to have to put it in inverted commas and then explain it. So it can't just be explain what the poet means in lines 7 and 8 and then you quote the line. No, that's not answering the question. Also, it shows a, a lack of understanding. Okay, so number one, three reasons for why this is a Shakespearean sonnet. So a sonnet is generally 14 lines and it's about love. So why specifically is this Shakespearean? Because there are three quatrains and a rhyming couplet. So that there already is a mistake. It should be three quatrains and a rhyming couplet. When I put up the notes and the questions and the answers for the Google Drive um, access, I will correct that and a rhyming couplet. The rhyme scheme is also in full. Uh, a, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. And if you want to include iambic pentameter, then that would also be um, a, correct, uh, a correct answer. Um, please, three quatrains and a rhyming couplet is worth one mark. Okay, it's worth one mark. It all goes together. Number two, quote two reasons for why the poet's lady is better than a summer's day. So number one, more lovely. Number two, more temperate. Number three, what is the eye of heaven? It's the sun. If they asked you to explain it, then you can say that it's personification and the sun is being compared to an eye um, from a human. Number four, identify and explain the figure of speech in lines five and six. So this is for three marks, and you'll see that I've drawn some arrows there at the top and underlined, um, identify and explain the figure of speech. Because what a lot of people do is they identify it and they tell me what it is, but then they don't explain in context of the actual poem, and that's a problem. Um, and you're going to lose unnecessary marks. So number one, it's a personification. Okay. What is it doing? It's comparing the surface of, a, of the sun excuse, um, to a face. So what is the point of that? What's the purpose of that? What is it doing? He is saying the sun is either very warm or very cold. In other words, it's temperamental. Okay, And that would be the third mark. So there are always reasons for why a figure of speech is used, for why a particular image is used. Something that the poet, the writer, songwriter, author wants to convey. So it's personification, comparing the surface of the sun to a face. And just like people's emotions change, just like their facial expressions change, so does summer, so does the sun. Number five, explain what the poet means in lines seven and eight. So yeah, you have to paraphrase. It is for two marks and it is two lines. So what is the basics of line seven? What is the basics of line eight? 
that everything is beautiful and eventually will grow old or decay, either through destiny or age. So there are the two things. So every fair from fair sometime declines. Everything eventually gets old or decays. Everything fades. Why? Either by chance, so chance, fate, destiny, anything along that line, or age, changes, nature, course. So as the seasons run, as the years progress, that is aging. Number six, what will the poet's lady not lose according to lines nine and ten? She won't lose her eternal summer and she won't lose possession of the fair that she has, the beauty. Then, death being personified and should be capitalized. So, when you have death or truth or justice or freedom and you are referring to them as personified, um, they, they are usually capitalized because they are taking on uh, human-like qualities, the name of a human or a place or a country um, or even the name of a thing like Rex the dog. Rex is going to be capitalized because it's the, it's the thing's name. So if you don't capitalize that, there's no regard for that person or that thing. So the poet is saying that he doesn't recognize death. There's no acknowledgement of death. It's like, oh, death, cool, fine, whatever, it's there. And especially because death has no power over her beauty. This is not something that he's going to get. He might get her body, but he's not going to get her beauty. So essentially the poet's saying it doesn't matter. Um, there's no acknowledgement. Number eight, the last two lines give the conclusion. So why does the poet say her beauty is eternal? Because her beauty is dependent on people reading about it. And as long as people read the poem, then her beauty is untouched. Another way you can say it is um, the beauty you know, is dependent on people being alive and reading the poem and the poem existing. And as long as that is happening, then we read about her beauty and it continues. So anything along those lines. Um, again, I apologize for the couple of typo mistakes in that. Um, thank you for seeing it through, but I will rectify it in the notes.